Hi there, Malcolm here with my 135th booktube video and today I'll be bringing you my review of the book of the month for October, Bullet Train by Kotaro Osaka, apologies if I pronounced that wrong, and translated into English by Sam Melissa. So Bullet Train is a train that travels very fast from Tokyo to other places of Japan and on it are passengers, surprisingly enough, except these passengers are mostly not nice people. They're assassins, they're crooks, they're criminals, they're gangsters, bagmen, the like. I mean, there's at least five of these guys on this train for various reasons. And of course, they're going to get into each other's business and not necessarily all of them or any of them are going to make it to the final destination of the train. So it's a thriller and we're going to find out who is going to be left standing. Now, a big problem with books like this is trying to find somebody to care about. They're all crooks, they're all gangsters, they're all bad men. And so it's really, really it's a question of why should I care if you get to the end or not? What's in it for me to invest in you as a character? And coupled with that, this is a translated book and doesn't matter how good the, the translations are, nuance is always lost in some capacity when a story is translated. And so it possibly didn't help the fact that I did struggle to actually find anybody to latch onto in this story. So the main characters are Satoshi, or the Prince, a uh, precocious 14 year old little psychopath, Yuji Kimura, a recovering alcoholic whose son is in a coma, having been pushed off a roof by the teenager. Two heavies who have just done a rescue job, rescuing the Mafia boss's son from a kidnap situation, and they're known as Lemon and Tangerine. Lemon's really into Thomas and Friends and goes on and on about Thomas the Tank Engine and his various other compatriots. And Tangerine has to sit there and listen to him waffle on about Thomas and Friends. As well as the son that they have recovered, they've also recovered the bag of money that they went in as a ransom. No intention to pay, but it was there to let them to get in and rescue him. So these two items there are supposed to return to the big boss. And then there's Nanao, who is set on the train with the express purpose of stealing this bag and getting off at the next station before the theft is being noticed. And these are the five that we follow through the story, jumping from one to the other. Not in any particular sequence, but where the story goes. And sometimes we do have a little bit of a time jump, you know, five minutes earlier from this point of view, and then off we go again. I mean, Kamira is the obvious likeable character because it's his very young son who's in a coma in the hospital and he's on the train seeking revenge against this teenager. But the things he does and the way he does it doesn't make him particularly relatable or likeable. Tangerine and Lemon are a little bit one-dimensional. I mean, yes, they hold on on about their interests, but as two characters, they are purely reactionary. And Nano is just extremely unlucky to a slapstick level of mishap and misfortune. And he certainly provides most of the entertainment along the way. The Prince has no likeable qualities whatsoever. However, despite not liking anybody particularly, I did read the whole thing. I was kind of curious to know where this was going to go. And also curious to know how a train could have so many dead bodies piling up on it without anybody else noticing. Okay, this is actually dealt with within the story itself at some point. Perhaps it should be mentioned a little bit earlier, but it does seem a little bit bizarre. And there was another character that pops up who I thought was going to be a lot, turn out to be a lot more than he was. And actually, we don't really find out whether he is anything in particular or not. It's got a nice little twist and turns in it as well. And the ending, I suppose, is quite satisfying. Though arguably, perhaps a little too satisfying. I think all the loose ends are too nicely tied up. Not unconvincingly, it's just, you know, stories don't generally end that conveniently. You know, you do find out the fates of all the characters involved. There's no ambiguity left there. Which, for those who don't like ambiguity at the end of their story, could be a great thing. But I've read a lot of things lately which have left quite open endings to their stories. Uh, and this felt a bit weird, as all. This bit was gifted to me and certainly wasn't, wouldn't have been one I would even looked at on the shelf, let alone bought. Had I got out of the library, I don't think I would have been inspired to go out and buy it. Although I don't have any issue having it on my shelf, apart from the fact it does take up space. Not sure if I'll read it again, though. So worth reading, but probably not worth keeping. So there we go, that's Bullet Train by Kotaro Isaka. Have you read it? Have you read it in the original Japanese and found it a better read? Very, very popular in Japan, apparently. So is it just something lost in translation or is it just not my sort of thing? So really curious to know. Comments down below, please. Any thoughts or feelings about this book? And as usual, if you have nothing nice to say, then please keep it to yourself. Thank you. And until next time, see you later.